Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer for Thursday, November the 12th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept, when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our lyres, for there our captors required of us songs and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Lay it bare, lay it bare, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed, blessed shall he be who pays you with what you have done to us. Blessed shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Uh, excuse me. Okay, brief comment, because that's one of the harder psalms uh, to read. Uh, Psalm 137 is uh, one of a group of psalms called the imprecatory psalms. And the imprecatory psalms are exactly what it sounded like. You are calling down God's wrath on your enemies. We look at that today and go, uh, you be doing that? And the answer is actually uh, yes, because what we're doing is putting dealing with our enemies in back into God's hands instead of taking things into our own hands. So we know that God will ju judge fairly against our enemies, and that uh, that way, basically you're casting all your burden onto him. So you will not be guilty of taking matters into your own hands and perhaps more than likely uh, committing sin in the process, grave sins in the process. So while these are hard to, to read, what you're actually doing is, is giving all the, your stress about it back to God and let's say, okay, God, here, handle this, because I can't, I won't do it right. It'd be just as bad as what my enemy did to me. And then this uh, real quick little bit of trivia where it talks about where they were down by the river, basically by the weeping willows, and they had their... Uh, their lyres, their instruments uh, hung up in the tree, and they're next to a river. Now, this is during the Babylonian captivity with the Jews in exile. And while they were in exile, they had no temple, obviously, no synagogue. So they would go down by the river. That was the equivalent of doing temple. For them. Uh, and then they would sing the Psalms as prayers to God. So that's what they're talking about when their captors come and go, oh, yeah, hey, Sing us some of those songs that you guys sing. And they're lamenting, like, how in the world are we going to pray these psalms to God when they're looking at it for entertainment value to mock them? So this is a difficult, difficult psalm among a handful of difficult psalms, but it's not as bad as you think. Understand that we're casting the burden of dealing with our enemies back to God and saying, you can handle it because I cannot. So that's enough about that. Our Old Testament reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 25. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Hosiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. For twenty-three years, from the thirteenth year of Hosiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, to this day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken persistently to you, but you have not listened. You have neither listened nor inclined your ears to hear. 
although the Lord persistently sent to you all his servants, the prophets, saying, Turn now every one of you from his evil way and his evil deeds, and dwell upon the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers from of old and forever. Do not go after other gods to serve and worship them, or provoke me to anger with the work of your hands. Then I will do you no harm. Yet you have not listened to me, declares the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the work of your hands to your own harm. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not obeyed my words, behold, I will send for all the tribes of the north, says the Lord, and for Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants, and against all these surrounding nations. I will devote them to destruction and make them a horror, a hissing, and everlasting desolation. Moreover, I will banish from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the grinding of the millstones in the light of the lamp. This whole land shall become a ruin and a waste, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Then after seventy years are completed, I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity to come, making the land an everlasting waste. I will bring upon that land all the words that I have uttered against it, everything written in this book, which Jeremiah prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall make slaves even of them, and I will recompense them according to their deeds in the work of their hand. Thus the Lord God of Israel said to me, Take from my hand this cup of the wine of wrath, and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. They shall drink and stagger and be crazed because of the sword that I am sending among them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations to whom the Lord sent me drink it, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, its kings and officials, to make them a desolation and a waste, a hissing and a curse, as at this day. Writing this morning is by Martin Luther from his commentary on Psalm 110. The prophet also interprets it thus after his splendid and extensive predictions about this king. He is to rule over all, smashing kings and whatever else is great and resists him, lest anyone understand this according to the Jewish delusion that it would happen physically in the manner of the world. He means to say it is certainly true that he is to be great and mighty above all kings on earth. But let me give you the true explanation of how he will deal with this matter, and by what manner and form he will achieve such a dominion. He is not going to be a secular lord and king, as I and my descendants in Jerusalem and other kings are. Instead, he will come to earth and share the ordinary life and society of men. He will live his life like an ordinary man and others will see nothing special or extraordinary about him. In this life, the prophet says, he will drink from the brook, that is, he will suffer and die. By drink or cup, scripture means any sort of torture, misery, and suffering, just as Christ prayed in the garden when he sweat blood, Luke 22.44, and said, Matthew 26.39, Dear Father, if it is possible, remove this cup from me, but if it cannot be otherwise, but that I drink it, thy will be done. You see, that is the kind of drinking of which the verse speaks. The prophets also speak thus and call it being drunk when God punishes. Therefore, to fill the cup, or to make drunk, means to suffer great torture and pain, and cup symbolizes that specific portion of suffering with God awards to him. Jeremiah 25, verses 15 and 16, Psalm 75, 8, and many other places express it this way. Therefore, Christ had drink a cup on earth and be drunk, that is, he suffered torture and pain, and perished before all the world. Furthermore, in his own kingdom, he was so miserable and poor that he had no place where he could lay his head. Matthew 8.20 No crown, royal adornment, or pomp could be seen about him, nothing but cross, nails, and blood. There he hung, unable to touch either heaven or earth, and unable to stand up on his feet. Join together in the Apostles' Creed this prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as always on Thursdays, the Thursday prayer deals with forgiveness of sins and a means of grace. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her. And you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled, and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your, for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also, sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may be. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.